Hello beautiful, this is Aromi here and welcome back to Seduce Me. I have pre-recorded a whole lot. So this is kind of like, a, I guess, probably a couple weeks, a week later since I recorded a whole chunk. Uh, so I don't quite remember a whole lot, but I'm gonna try my best to not like freaking reread everything over, but I'm pretty sure this part is his storyline. So we will not actually need to skip anything. So let's continue with Matthew, our cute little happy, cheerful guy. <laughs> However, my focus gathered on Matthew, sitting on the throne as if it was his and reading a book. For some reason, Matthew reminded me of James at that moment. He seemed engraved into his reading, reading each word and absorbing each meaning. Him on the throne surprisingly fit him. There was something about him. <laughs> this is an easy read. A saddened cry, however, echoed through the hall, forcing Matthew to stop, close the book, and stand from the throne. Mother? God, she sounds quite creepy. I looked around, confused at the crying and where it was coming from. It seemed to just echo through the room without any source of direction. Matthew sighed and placed the book on the arm armrest of the throne before he cupped his hands together. Fly and comfort her, will you? As Matthew opened up his hand, a small bird with blue and purple feathers perked up from the hiding place. Matthew smiled before releasing it into the air. I watched as it flew off and glided through an open archway. The sound of its flapping wings faded into the air as it flew farther into the castle. Come on. I could tell that Matthew was holding his breath. He must have cared very deeply for his mother. It was incredibly sweet. At last, the sound of the crying stopped, ma making Matthew release a happy sigh. There we go. Oh. Matthew cracked his knuckles in approval and reached for his book. However, before he could even grade the cover with his finger, the sound of pattering entered the room. You! What son! Away from the throne! Oh my god, you little hobbit thing. Get away. Alright! Alright! Ah, what am I going to do with you? You're a child! <sighs> Matthew glared at the servant as the servant quickly brushed the throne off, like there was dust all over it. The next time I see you on the throne, I will inform the Demon Lord. Understand? What is he gonna do? Kill me? <laughs> yes. The Demon Servant continued to brush over the throne before knocking the book from the armrest. Matthew froze as the servant quickly patted over and picked it up. What is this? A book? Why do you have it? To read? Cause I'm bored. I was reading. You read? <laughs> you don't need to read. You're never going to need knowledge for anything, fourth son. What I don't get is, what if James somehow drastically died? I'm not saying he will, but I mean it would go to Eric. But then what if he suddenly, <laughs> like? Honestly, what are they gonna do? Being a knight? I don't get it. I saw Matthew's eyes twitch, make me a grimace. The servant sure had a mouth. It was annoying at the very least. I'll just take this book and bring it to the heir himself to read. He's reading faster than the library can provide. But that's... Raestro's next area of study. <sighs> the servant began to walk away, ignoring Matthew's glare of anger. The servant stopped. However, to look to Matthew to pound one more nail into the wound. Let's face it, kid. You have the smallest horns, the smallest frame, and the least amount of power among the noble sons. You'll never be like them, so just stop trying. Use your incubus powers on others who have a child fetish or something. Ew. I mean, I never noticed his horns was the smallest, even though he wasn't the youngest. That's, that's just straight up mean. I mean, Matthew's like a bubbly kid. He's like the guy version of me. Everybody wants Matthew. No, well, depends on what type of <laughs> personality you're going for. The demon looked at Matthew up and down before rushing off where he came from, wherever he came from. As the servant disappeared, Matthew summoned a knife and chucked it in the direction where the servant left. The knife embedded itself into the hard stone beside the door into the hall. Ugh, I hate that guy. Disgusting pig fawn. He's a pig. Don't look like a pig. 
Matthew walked over and sat on the floor of the throne, clearly aggravated. Eventually, Matthew stopped the magic, lowering the mirror and holding it in his hand before looking to me. I had hoped to show you my mother, but I guess the mirror wanted to show you something else. Sorry. Come over here, Matthew. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Like, right now. Hug. That servant is terrible. <laughs> Tell me about it. He served the demon lord almost his whole life. Ugly pig fawn. Matthew laughed while I laughed at the insult. It was good to see Matthew in good spirits despite what was shown and what was happening around us. Still, it was sad to see that he was considered the child of noble sons. He could read books of knowledge that his brothers hadn't read, and he seemed caring. It was insulting to see someone tear him down like that. Matthew smiled at me before pocketing the mirror. Whatever. Thankfully, we got out of there, so I could be with my brothers like a normal family. No hierarchies, no politics, no pig funds, nothing! I smiled. It was good that he saw the positive side. However, his face slowly turned to a sad one before he looked down at the bed. Matthew? You've done a lot for me and my brothers. Sheltering us, letting us continue to live here. It may not seem like much, but for us it's everything. But I don't want you to get hurt because of us. You're so caring. I watched in spe speechlessness. Speechless. I watched in speechless silence as Matthew lifted his head, his eyes full of a hopeless smile. If you guys hear any movements, it's because I'm trying to fix my necklace. Like the end of the necklace, like reached the front. Like I hate when that happens. But some people say it's because someone misses you so much it goes to yeah. I kind of believe those things. Sorry. <laughs> That's why I'm sorry. Don't worry. I mean, you've. You guys done a lot for me too, like, made me stronger and stuff. And you're like the love of my life apparently, Matthew, even though, you know, Damien, but... In this world, you're my boo-boo. <laughs> Matthew lowered his head in shame. I couldn't help but feel my heart squeeze within my chest at the sight. I truly cared. Matthew let out a small sigh, before looking to me with a new smile. He hid his head as well, but I could tell he was still upset about the whole ordeal. Alright. You need to sleep, and I need to make dinner. I'll wake you up when dinner is done. You don't have to make me dinner, you know? I can just go to sleep and stay sleeping. Matthew gently pressed me back down into the bed, resolved in what had happened. Still, I guess. I couldn't let him leave without doing something. I quickly pulled Matthew down to me, lifted my head, and gently kissed him. Softly laying a hand on his cheek to keep his face close, Matthew stared in deep surprise before hesitantly kissing me back, pressing my cheek and slightly melting at the touch of our lips. A soft sigh escaped his lips before he slowly pulled with a smile. He gently licked his lips. <laughs> every time, even with Damien's, this is the same thing, but every time I stop at that just to laugh at it, making me go red in the face at a simple gesture. He allowed a satisfied sigh before nestling my forehead. The sigh, it's like... I don't, I don't honestly know, but it's like a killer thing. I guess like how guys hear girls moan like when they pull away from kisses. I guess the sigh is like a killer thing for girls and the moans are a killer things for guys. I don't know. Go to sleep. No, I don't want to sleep unless you're going to be in my dreams. And with that, he stood up and left the room, leaving me to rest as per request. I smiled to myself before relaxing into the mattress. <laughs> That's my life. I suddenly tensed up. I felt matured, majorly uneasy. Something wasn't right. I felt it in my core. She must be here. The thought of her in the house infuriated me beyond belief. I had to make sure she was not here. I rode out of bed and quickly left my room, watering the halls and listening closely. Oh. Did, did she do this for Damien? I don't think so, right? She was a demon, but I was listening very intently. There was no way she would have been able to sneak up on me. I know you're here. Where are you? I could feel myself growl. It wasn't a matter of fear that she'd take away the boys anymore. Her very existence had a lit, had lit a fire of rage within my gut, which only grew as each day went by. This feud was getting on my nerves, and I knew it would not end, end well for one of us. I wasn't going to lose that demon bitch. 
Leave me alone. Yeah, that's some um, that's not correct, guys, because I don't really cuss a whole lot. <laughs> My heart stopped. Diana was with Matthew. My mind flew into slow motion, playing fake images of Diana. Di Diana trying to seduce Matthew in my head to further fan the angry flame inside of me. I instinctively followed Matthew's voice. I was approaching the grand lobby and followed the commotion to the dining room. The sound was echoing from the kitchen, so I peeked inside while hiding around the corner. I almost growled at the sight. Matthew was holding to one side of the kitchen's island counter with Diana holding the other side, looking to him with a smirk. Oh, come on, Matthew. Don't you like games? A game of tag sounds so fun. Why you're dressed like that? No, thank you. Your titty might go... <laughs> it might fly, fly out, okay? Not with you. Now go away! Uh, I'm hurt. Wounded, truly. Did I go too far? Hell yeah. You went too far when you came here and attacked her! Pity. And here I thought I was going to offer you the chance to become something better than just a simple incubus. What was Diana going on about? More than just an incubus. She was insane. Oh, this is when she... For Damon, it was when... Yeah, he was in the bedroom with me at that time. How about becoming the next demon lord? Oh... I froze. What did she mean, becoming the next demon lord? The boys weren't in the demon world anymore. They had no claim to the throne anymore. Matthew stared at Diana, which made me worry. The next demon lord? Well, currently, I'm the contracted bride to the heir to the throne. Since the throne is open, it's available to any son of the demon lord's line. Think about it. You'll gain the throne, the land, and a bride to continue your lineage with. Doesn't that sound like a perfect life for an incubus like you? You'll show your father and mother how grown up you are. That you're not just some little cute boy people can take for granted. I could feel myself gripping my fist tightly in anger. How dare this girl try to convince Matthew to return to the demon world? He ran away from it. He didn't have to go back. He shouldn't go back. My mind began to wander, imaging him saying yes. He would leave and the brothers would follow to bring him back. They'd be trapped because of Diana would make sure they would they could not could never leave. Matthew would be the new lord, but Diana is his queen and I'd lose him. Like I would believe you. You don't need to believe me, Matthew. You just need to come back home with me. I promise. You'll be respected as you were supposed to be. I'm not falling for it! Fall for what? The truth? The truth is that your brothers still treat you like a child, even though the demon world is far behind you. The truth is that your little human love affair is fleeting. She can never see you as a man, just as a little boy who wants to grow up. Stop it! Holy shiz! I had a mute real quick because I'm eating chocolate. <laughs> I stared at Matthew ch oh. as Matthew chuckled a handful of the knives at Diana, who ducked and dodged him with ease. They dug themselves into the tile wall before fading away as if they didn't exist. You dare attack me? You have a manly voice on you. I'm not going back, and that is final! I can see Matthew's muscle tense and flat. Wanting to attack Diana. The girl in question, however, took a deep breath and looked to Matthew with a pleading look. You won't even return to your mother. She's been crying ever since you left. Shoot the mother card. Do not bring her into this! Matthew glared at as Diana circled the island towards him. She begged me to bring you back. She wants you to get what you deserve. The throne. I don't believe you! Matthew then walked away from Diana, heading to the fridge to start dinner, as if she wasn't there. Diana stopped and leaned against the counter. She'll never love you, you know. What? I don't mind. I care for her. <laughs> the human girl? You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She's a human. You're a demon. Excuse me, he's an incubus, which needs sexual stuff to gain energy. Well, how can I not provide that for him? 
<laughs> she just, what the? <laughs> I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would give away my position, but I was growing extremely tired of Diana. No, I, I want to hear what he has to say. I gotta, mm, hold on. I didn't want to step in at the wrong time. Matthew could handle Diana. I trusted him enough to fight for me. I stood my ground and watched in silence. You better freaking fight for me, oh. Matthew. Now, I have to make dinner and you're in the way. Can you leave now? Astonishing. You're making dinner for a human girl. Can. You. Leave. Now? Oh. <laughs> this was a complete waste of my time. I should have just enthralled your little human girlfriend and made her jump off a cliff. That, that doesn't... Okay. Diana sighed before crossing her arms and leaning on one hip. Though, I'm not surprised she hasn't come out of her little hiding spot oh, to shit. come and defend you. It's, uh... It, the, 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 the subtitles aren't following the voices. I'm so sorry. Matthew looked at Diana, glaring daggers into her soul as she raised her arms up gently as if to block his attempt to scare her. Humans are such fleeting creatures. She can never fully and truly love a demon. Excuse me, I hid for a reason. Ah, frick. Yo, maybe I should, but whatever. Diana then looked over in my direction, locking eyes with me. I froze in surprise. She knew I was there. Diana smirked as they stepped into the room. Let me know when you figure that out, my dear. I'll... Let me know when you figure that out, sweetie. There we go. I'll come running. And with that, Diana vanished, leaving Matthew and, Eli and I alone in that room, left in silence. I finally let out the air I was uncautiously holding in my chest. Relaxing from the ordeal, Matthew stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. Are you alright? Are you alright? I mean, I didn't stick up for you, but that, that was a reason, because I kind of wanted to see if you would fight for me, and I didn't want to, like, barge in on the wrong time. I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately after being surprised. Matthew let out a sigh, relaxing in my embrace. In the, in the embrace. I gently placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. I wasn't, just, I wasn't sure what to do. All of this was spinning in my head in circles before I decided to simply look up at the man holding me. Matthew pulled away slowly, looking into my eyes to reveal a deep love that haunted his blue irises. Alright, let's get you back to bed. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Matthew then wrapped an arm around my shoulder and lowered his, lower, his other arm around... Uh, uh, I can't talk, I'm like so flustered. He lowered his other arm underneath my knees. I easily held on to him as he lifted me like a blushing bride and carried me out of the room towards my me out of the room towards my room. Matthew was kind enough to know my mind and would not force the issue no matter what. It was too sweet and I didn't deserve his kindness. Matthew gently lowered me to my bed before pet petting my head with a loving smile. I was beaming in happiness. As Matthew turned to leave, I slowly sank into the covers, relaxing. The sound of footsteps echoed before finally. I was alone. I rested my head against the pillows, enjoying the cool they provided as I closed my eyes. I'll be ready when I'm ready. Will it be soon? Who knew? All I knew, that, knew at that moment was that I made a choice I felt was right. I will not leave here empty-handed. Oh my god, of course. <sighs> well, if I can't... This is where she, like, rapes me. <laughs> the rest of the story can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal. With school and my friends not remembering what had happened. It was as if magic had never even appeared in my world. Matthew cared for me and we remained close to each other. It was sweet, like a simply fairy tale ending. He didn't step over my boundaries and I deeply appreciate it. Matthew remained faithful to me, living with me and serving me like a servant. I needed the help around the house. I needed the help around the house anyway. It was almost funny to think about a demon becoming a servant to a human girl. The others decided to leave on their own accord. They knew that my future would only need Matthew at my side, so they each decided to start their own lives in the human world. Matthew understood perfectly, wishing his brothers the best. 
I felt bad as well for being closer to Matthew than the others, but they reassured me that was that I was okay, and that they would remain nearby should I ever need them. I was happy for that. But what of my future? Well, it was kind of, kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to... Okay, he took the toy company. Blah, blah, blah. James made blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh... Okay, we, we already read all that for Damien, so. <laughs> One morning I woke up and took in all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons, the devils, the magic, it was all surreal to me, to, surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could have all been a dream. My fears vanished, however, as a knock appeared at my bedroom door. Come in. The door opened to reveal Matthew with a small tray of food for me. A vase with, blue, with a blue rose sat beside a hot plate of pancakes, eggs, and bacon, decorating my breakfast beautifully. Good morning! Made breakfast! <laughs> so cute. But you don't have to be my servant, you know. You're supposed to be my boyfriend. <laughs> I simply smiled. It wasn't a dream. I still had Matthew. I still felt the magic in the air around me. I wasn't alone. Matthew walked over and placed a tray on the bed across my legs. Did you sleep well? I did. I had a dream about everything that happened to us. Oh? What do you remember? Your face, of course. Super cute. <laughs> everything. How we met. How you cared for me. Everything. It almost made me believe it was all a dream. Matthew smiled at me and sat beside me in bed, making me giggle. Well, if this is a dream, then this is the best dream ever. No. Oh. Matthew smiled his cutest smile, making my heart flutter slightly. His devotion to me was beyond imaginary. That was my happily ever after. Okay. Um, Matthew. Again, what are these two other images that I am not getting? Like, Damien is only three. I thought, like, maybe, hey, let me pick this naughty thing. There might be uh, <laughs> a picture, but apparently not. Maybe, I don't know. Are those, like, the not good pictures? I don't get it. So, do they have their own pictures? They have their own pictures, too. Wow, she has a whole bunch of... That I'm not getting. Andrew. Andrew has some too? Diana, of course, her rapist ass look. Huh. So they all have their a whole bunch of pictures, but I did not unlock it. And I don't know if I got the super happy ending or anything. Because of the way this was created. Once It just tells you, like, oh, this is what happened to me ever after. And... There's no, like, screen saying, oh, good ending, okay ending, bad ending, super happy ending, I don't know. I was expecting that, but... I don't know. So, I guess now, the next perfect guy would be... James. <laughs> and then it'll be Eric. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's James. This is... Sam! What? I'm getting confused now. Sam, correct. Okay, next guy is Sam. We already unlocked one of his pictures. Cause that was when he was threatening us for a damn kiss. But Sam is next. And it's quite weird for me to play Sam because... The, the guy that voiced Sam actually does YouTube as well. So when I, whenever I watch him play his games, it's all like, uh, kind of, <laughs> kind of chose you in a visual novel. And just like hearing his voice, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Like, anyways, I, I should wrap this up before I sound any more awkward. So thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you guys next time.